to a true hero. Some would say an unlikely hero, but we know that all heroes don't wear capes. He's a customer services manager at a railway station who's uh, saved a remarkable 29 lives, and he's done it simply through the power of talking. After taking a Samaritan's course on how to spot signs of people who are vulnerable, Rizwan Javid has been able to start conversations and talk people out of taking their own lives. To mark Mental Health Awareness Week, the Metro newspaper has been profiling mental health heroes, and Rizwan is one of them, and rightly so. He joins us now. Morning, Rizwan. Morning. Lovely to see you this morning. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for um, having me. So, look, take us back. You, you, how this all came about, how did you end up doing this course and, and realising that, that, that perhaps this was something you wanted to pursue? Uh, so I joined the railway in 2015 um, and a, one of my managers at the time um, said it would be a good opportunity for me to attend a Samaritans course. I uh, didn't think much of it at the time, but after attending the course and I saw how beneficial it was and all the aspects of the learning um, and I was able to implement the training two days after, after receiving it. Yeah, so doing the course is one thing. But to expect to use that training within two days is remarkable. What sort of things were you learning about? Was it about being able to identify people that maybe looked vulnerable uh, and that needed some support? The main things was to, to look out for how to identify a vulnerable person, what signs to look out, and basically give you the confidence uh, to challenge anyone who was vulnerable uh, within I mean, what I thought was interesting about what you said about doing the course, uh, and useful, I think, to other people, is that um, you said it, it, it kind of reinforced that you already had the skill set inside you, but gave you the confidence to use it, things that you might have done naturally on instinct. You then thought, well, it is the right thing to do. So give us an idea, because it might help for other people too, because I know you want to encourage people to talk yeah. to people. First of all, what should we look out for in a vulnerable person? And then how best to approach them? I think behaviours are one of the things that is outstanding. How someone's looking, if they're positioned in a certain way um, within an environment, or signs that they're removing their clothing, some distressed facial expressions. Um, and it's stuff like that that you would approach. Um, and it's not, it's not anything spe specific you would say. It could be anything from talking about the weather or a piece of garment they're wearing. You but know, crucially just to... not, are you OK or are you all right? Because that can often prompt more anxiety. I thought that was interesting as well. You just talk about anything else but. Yeah, basic. For, for, I mean, we've all been in situations where you're going through distress and the last thing you want is someone to say, are you OK? But just, just building small talk, really, it doesn't really matter what you say, it's how you say it mm. and, and how you make it personal Getting to engage conversation. So tell us about that first experience. I mean, it's 29 lives that we know that you've had a huge impact already, but that first one, what did you notice and how were you able to help that person? Um, so it was a cold evening and I was on a night shift um, and I noted, noticed an individual in the station environment um, who was wearing barely nothing at the time. Or considering the temperature? Considering the temperature. So I approached him. Um, he didn't want to engage with me at the time. However, I started talking about things. Maybe he was wearing the weather at the time and so how I could engage with him, basically. Um, I sat down with him, um, gained his trust and just listened to him. Um, and within that time, he started trusting me and he, become, he started op opening up with me and we, we engaged from there onwards and I'm, I, I provided him with the help. But he shared with you, didn't he, that he was thinking about taking his own life. That's, I mean, it was correct. that stark. The reality of what you had done just two days after the course was you ide brilliantly identified somebody who was vulnerable and had opened him up to the point where he was able to share that with you. Um, and, and you know that that had an impact on his life going forward because he then was able to step back from where he had been and get the support and help he needed. Most definitely. And going back to the course as well, um, it felt like the course was being implemented in real life. Mm -hmm. um, so the scenarios that we went through, uh, it was like literally just expressing them in real life with the individual. Um, and it was emotional. I bet. Um, but it was good to get the person to a point of safety and hopefully get them the help that they required to get back on, on well, track with their life. I mean, it's extraordinary what you've done. And I know other people of those 29 that you've helped have come back and been very specific about saving, saying, you saved my life, you turned things around for me. I'm just wondering if, if some people are watching and thinking, gosh, you're amazing, you're a hero, but I would be nervous about approaching someone who is behaving 
in those ways because I will be scared. You know, what, how, would, how do you know when someone's potentially a threat to you if they're behaving oddly? You know, if you saw somebody taking their clothes off on a station, I think a lot of people's instinct would be, ooh, what's going on here? I mean, it's, it's the small talk to, mm. to kind of distract them from their intentions at the time. Mm. It, like I said before, no, there's nothing wrong you can say at the time just to distract them from their intentions. Uh, anything small can, can, can achieve that. Mm. 29 lives Amazing. that you know that you have helped uh, along the way. One woman came back and told you, didn't she, personally, mm. the That's difference right. you'd made? What did she say? Um, you don't really get people coming back to you often, but this one particular woman did come back um, after a few weeks and she thanked me for just being there that night. Mm. Um, and it was quite... Um, I don't know what I'm saying. Emotional? It was emotional and, and I felt a sense of being proud in the sense that I helped this person yeah. potentially to get back on track. So you get a huge amount from it as well, don't you? Because... It, you, you do. To, to know someone's OK after having that conversation with them at the time, you know, where they're at, they're probably their lowest point in life. And, and giving them that helping support to get back on track and achieve their capabilities is, is amazing. It's an amazing feeling. It's extraordinary what you've done. It's inspiring and I know that you want people, you know, when they're out and about, either on your transport or just people who often sit there and not talk to the person next to them, will they? I mean, just, just say good morning and offer a smile and, and see what a difference it can make to yourself and to those around you. It's a, it's a good message. Definitely. It's just small things that we can mm. do to break that barrier. Yeah. Um, saying good morning um, to the person sitting on the train opposite us every single day, or whether it be boarding a service and seeing someone not feeling as they would mm. potentially be any other day, breaking that conversation, engaging with them, um, because it is the small talk that... And that you never know the difference it can make. make. You look very smart. Are you heading off to work now? Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm not heading over to, to work at the moment. I'm going home after this. You're on, so you're on leave? That's correct. Yeah. It's a catchy so you, uniform, isn't it? It's a very smart uniform. It's I think that maybe uh, that your, your employers, because you're doing such a brilliant job for being an ambassador for the company, should give you the day off in lieu for this, because it feels like we're making you work. <laughs> on a, That's enough small to... talk from you, <laughs> yeah. you're saying. Uh, <laughs> is it Transport for London that you work for? Um, uh, MTR Elizabeth line. MTR Elizabeth um, line. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be fair for Rizwan to be given an extra day off because we've made him get up ridiculously early to come in and share his story. <laughs> uh, but we're thrilled that you could come and share it and hopefully it will inspire a few more people. Thank you for all you are doing, Rizwan. It's Thank a you so thing. much for having me. Yeah, an astounding wonderful. difference. And if you've been affected by any of the issues we've been talking about, then we have help to offer out there and advice on our website, itv.com forward slash helplines. Lovely to speak to you. Thanks, Lee.